Okay, now we got that boring well driller stuff out of the way, we can have some fun here. I'm just kidding, Jim. Um, my name's Ross Hansen. I am serving as the Weber River and the West Desert Regional Engineer. And uh, I want to talk to you about public water suppliers today. I'm actually glad I'm here. I'm glad to do this. And the reason is a little selfish. Um, I firmly believe the more you know, the less phone calls I get. And my job gets easier. So I'm glad to do it. I don't necessarily like to speak in public, but I'm glad to share some information with you. And hopefully you can walk out of here with more knowledge than you had when you came. Um, let's see. Let's, uh, let me tell you how I want to go about this. I want to I want to open this up to a kind of a dialogue where you guys can ask questions and we can talk through it. Um, I want to make sure you're understanding. I don't want to just give a presentation where you um, where I give a dog and pony show and and uh, yeah and at the end say do you have any questions and you forgot them all and and you walk out of here without the knowledge you need. Um, so now that that kind of makes it a little more difficult to control the time, but I'll try to keep control of the time, we'll keep moving. But do feel free to ask questions and talk with me, okay, as we go through this. Um, let's see, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? I'm going to skip that slide right there. Mark put that one up. <laughs> All right. Um, I, just by show of hands, who, who either works for or with a public water supplier or municipality. Hold them up for just a second. Okay, good, good. There's a lot of you here. Um, who doesn't know what a public water supplier is? Good, everybody knows that. All right, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go over, go through this presentation. We're going to say we're going to look into what a public supplier, public water supplier is, and we're going to define that. And then we're going to go and we're going to talk about uh, how public water suppliers are treated differently than your regular water right holders. I found the best way to convey this information is to kind of compare and contrast the difference between how a public water supplier is treated with some of the state engineer functions and how a private or a Joe citizen is treated with his water rights and some of the state engineer functions. And I think that kind of demonstrates some of the, the different things that you have to work through. Um, so in comparing and contrasting, we're going to focus in on three different functions that we administer here at the State Engineer's Office. We're going to look at the extensions of time to file proof of beneficial use, and we're going to look at non-use and forfeiture issues with respect to public water suppliers and your regular Joe Citizen water rights. And we're also going to look at proof and certification of public water supplier water rights. And then at the end, we're going to give an example. Also, I will, as I'm going through here, I'm going to try to point out some of the exam questions. And at the end, I'm going to look at the exam questions so I make sure I cover them all so you're not blindsided by them when you do take the exam, OK? Here we go. Let's see. I always like to throw up a real quick slide showing you some of the acronyms and things that I use in my presentation so that you don't, uh, so that when I say some of them, you're not looking at me funny. Um, if you'll just take a look at that real quick, just kind of see some of them. Um, in my slides, you'll see SE is the state engineer is abbreviated for the state, an abbreviation for the state engineer. And you're going to see public water supplier in there as PWS. Okay, so bear that in mind as we go through it. And, I'll, and we'll get moving quick here. All right, so now I have to apologize for the first two slides you're going to see right up front. They are the actual statute for what is a public water supplier. And they, there are several things on these two slides that are going to be on your exam, OK? So we're going to talk about what a public water supplier is. And it says it in section 73-1-4. And it says that, oh, I'm having a hard time getting to the right side. There we go. A public water supplier is a entity that supplies water directly or indirectly to the public for municipal, domestic, or industrial use and is a public entity or a water corporation as defined in section 5421. But that water corporation has to be regulated by the Public Service Commission to be able to qualify as a public water supplier. Okay. 
or a public water supplier can be a community water system. Now, there are some criteria for a community water system to fit within what is called a public water supplier within the statute. We're going to look at those, and they are, on the, they are on the exam. As a matter of fact, those numbers are, you have to know those numbers right there. So as you can see in parent AA there, it, it says that a community water system has to supply water to at least 100 service connections or regularly serve at least 200 year-round residents. Now usually I get some funny looks on that one. Does that make sense? It's one or the other. Okay, 100 residents full-time or 200, or 200 year-round residents. 100 service conditions full-time or 200 year-round residents. So you could have 50 residents with four people in each of the homes and you could still meet this, right? Okay, to continue, as qualifiers for that community water system, the people that use the water have to have voting, they have to be voting members and they have to own a share in the community water system and receive water from the community water system in proportion to the members share in the community water system. Okay? They also need to pay the rate set by the community water system based on the water member, based on the water the member receives. Okay, that last one, not very applicable to most people in this room. A water users association, there are some over here that it's applicable to, but a water users, some water users associations can qualify as a public water supplier um, if they are owned more than 70% by a public entity and it's sponsored by a local water project. Now that was put into statute mainly for Provo River Water Users Association, but there are, I guess there are technically some other entities that qualify under that. Okay, so I apologize for those. Now, I'm gonna go back to a slide right here. So how do I become a public water supplier? Well, you act like one. There is no application process and there's no official list to become a public water supplier. You do those things or you meet the criteria in the code that we just went over and you're a public water supplier. We don't have you fill out an application or anything like that. I've had that question before. Okay, um, let's go to, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare and contrast the difference between how a public water supplier and its water rights are dealt with and compare that to how we deal with the regular Joe citizen's water rights, okay? And we're gonna, right now we're gonna talk about the state engineer function or state engineer process of extensions of time to submit proof of beneficial use. Okay, as you can see in that top section there, it says that a non-public water supplier water right cannot receive an extension of time beyond 50 years to complete works. That's important, okay? So you're a regular guy with a farm or whatever out there, you cannot receive an extension of time to complete works beyond 50 years. Now go down below that, on that second to the last hyphen down there, it says simply holding an approved application for future public need is reasonable due diligence to go beyond holding an application for 50 years for a public water supplier, okay? So the regular Joe citizen cannot get beyond 50 years, but a public water supplier can with when it comes to extending the time to submit proof of beneficial use, okay? Um, when the regular Joe citizen wants to get a, an extension of time, he has to show due diligence or reasonable cause for delay. Yes, I'm just giving you an example of, a, let's say that we got a farmer and he is, he's using, he's, he's trying to develop his, he's trying to develop his project. Maybe he's using a little bit of water, hasn't got it all developed yet. Maybe he's, maybe he hasn't even drilled his well yet. Okay, maybe he's put a sprinkling system in and got his well drilled. There's a whole bunch of different scenarios that could play out there, but as long as he's working toward, toward, uh, 
developing his project that he asked us to develop, then he can qualify to get an extension of time. If he's doing due diligence, yes, extension of time to file proof. Okay? As you've probably heard today, if somebody, if somebody uh, submits an application to our office, I mean, realistically, they get four to five years to put the uh, water to beneficial use. Um, what we're talking about right now is he's gone those four to five years and he's not quite done putting the water to use. And so he's saying, hey, state engineer, I know I told you, I know you only gave me five years to put this to use. Can I get an extension of time to do so? That's what we're talking about right now. Okay, go ahead. So, so say I'm a farmer and I have a couple hundred acres and I want to... So say I'm a farmer, I have a couple hundred acres and I have, you know, I'm just doing livestock and whatnot, but I, my plan is in 45 years, I'm going to develop the property and put my houses on it. And I, I have the equation worked out. So as long as I'm acting like a public utility company or water, is, is that what you're kind of saying is I'm able to go ahead and I'll get my use permitted now and then I can just over time get that developed? Okay, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're trying, what you're thinking of is you're a farmer, you're out there cultivating, you're growing a, a crop and with the, in the back of your mind you're thinking to yourself, I'm going to someday sell this to a developer and put houses on it. Is that or what you're kind of asking? The, or I'm going to be the developer. And, and or you're going to be the developer. Yeah. Okay, what you would have asked for in your original application would have been the farming use. Okay, so you, you would probably have come into our office and said, hey, I want to grow 100 acres worth of alfalfa here on this field. And we would have probably have given you an approval to go out and put the 100 acres of alfalfa on the field. Maybe it takes you, so what I'm trying to get into right now is extensions of time. So you, you come in, you, haven't, you go four to five years, you haven't quite got your 100 acres in, maybe you've got 20 of them in. Maybe you haven't got a good enough well, you, you need to recondition the well or something and you need more time to put that 100 acres of alfalfa to use and you come into our office and say, can I have more time to do that? Can I have, can I have some, some additional time before I need to submit proof to your office? And if, if at a later date, now separate these two issues, if at a later date you want to develop that property into houses, most likely the process you would have went through is you would have you would have proofed up and received a certificate for the acreage that you put under irrigation and then at a later date you would apply for a change application to change it from growing hay on your field to growing homes on your field. And once you do that process, once you put a change application in, you're going to also have to go through that proof process again. So then you're now working on putting homes in instead of alfalfa. So it's kind of a process. All right, um, so what I'm trying to point out here though to you guys, and there was a lot of you that raised your hand when I asked you if you were public water, affiliated with public water suppliers. What I'm trying to point out to you is you can get beyond 50 years of extensions if you're a public water supplier. You cannot if you're a regular citizen. Okay, that's one of the special treatments you receive. Now, how do you get beyond 50 years as a public water supplier? Once you get to that 50 year mark and you haven't put all the water to use, you have to apply for an extension of time and with that extension of time you have to submit what's called a 40 year plan. Okay, this is important because I get lots of phone calls about this. We're going to talk about what a 40 year plan is and what goes into a 40 year plan. Okay? Go ahead. He's bringing your mic so give him one second here. If I don't meet the other qualifications of a public water uh, person, uh -huh. and I have received, got to read it here, Bureau of Reclamation money for part of my plan, does that make me a public water user? I represent an irrigation company that only have 65 users, and I guess if you count their kids, there's 200 people there, but uh, 65 water users, but I have received grant money from Bureau of Rec. If you go back a frame from that one, talk at the bottom it says that is a local sponsor of a water project con constructed by the United States Bureau of Rec. Okay, so it says, let's read that whole thing. It says, and, and I'm going to ask for Kent and Boyd to help me on this one. A water user association in which one or more public entities own at least 70% of the outstanding shares. Are you a water users association? 
not according to the 200 year round residents or 100 service connections. We're a water irrigation company. Okay, and there's we several. We have used money from the Bureau of Rec for some of our pro the project we're on. Okay, there's several ways to qualify as a public water supplier. I want more years to finish our plan. <laughs> right. And by the way, are you bumping up against the 50 year plan? 50 years? No, I'm bumping up against 15 years. Oh, okay. Two, two uh, five year extensions on. I'm on my third year extension. Okay, so I'm going to back up one slide. So watch what I'm doing here. I'm going to back up one slide. There's there's four different ways to qualify as a public water supplier. Public, be a public entity. We are a public entity. Yes, okay. we're a, we're a, a co-op okay. incorporated in the state of Utah. Hmm. All right. If you're a public entity, then you meet that part of the statute, and you can qualify as a public water supplier. But now. I'm not an attorney, and I don't know your your whole situation. I don't even know where you're from. Where are you from, by the way? Rich County, Woodruff. Okay. So it's possible that you already qualify as a public water supplier. I want more years. And and you can get it. <laughs> okay. Okay? <laughs> okay, thank but you. But we can talk afterward if you want to talk more. To, and But I would probably consult your attorney to make sure that you qualify as a public water supplier as you're going forward so you can plan accordingly. Because there are definite benefits to being a public water supplier. Okay. Um, let's see, we were right, okay, so we're talking about 40-year plans, content of 40-year plans. Guys, we get lots of questions with respect to 40-year plans, so I really want to convey some good information here, because I know this will stop a lot of phone calls from coming in. All right, what goes into a 40-year plan? Um, you need to show in your 40-year plan your projected population growth. You got to show it to us. You got to say, hey, we think our city or our, our irrigation company or our water municipality or whatever it is, is going to grow to be this big and have this much population in it. Okay? You got to show that to us. You also need to show what works. In other words, what wells, what points of diversion, what other diversion works you've done are in place and what expenditures you have extended. You got to show that in your 40 year plan. Here's a key thing. The 40-year the plan needs to be water right specific. Okay, you can't, and, and this happens over and over again, you can't just hand us a generalized 40-year plan and say, here you go. It doesn't work like that. It needs to be water right specific. Okay? What does that mean? All right, so I'm going to take, go ahead, ask your question. I'm going to see if I can merge them. Was it the same? Sort of. Okay, go ahead and ask. So if you have multiple water rights in your municipality and they're associated with different wells, do you have to be that specific that you identify each water right with each source? Yes, you do. Okay. Yes, you do. Now, okay, so an example. Um, you have, and good question, thank you. Um, you have three water rights in your, as, in your municipality, in your public water supply system. And uh, you want to, um, you want, two of them are, two of the water rights are certificated, and one of the water rights you're trying to extend. It's not, you haven't quite used all the water under that, other, that last water right. And so two of them are certificated, one you need an extension of time on, and so this is what we're talking about. You've got to show me, you need to tabulate, for the state engineer, you need to show him what, what water rights you have, what water rights are certificated, what your population growth is, and why you need that third water right extended. We need to understand what's going on. So I'm going to give you an example, okay? Let's, uh, let, let me hit that service area and I'll, then I'll give you an example. Um, Service area. What is the service area of a public water supply system? Anybody got any thoughts on that? We get tons of questions on this one too. Anybody got something? Okay, I'll throw it out to you. Currently, when you're doing your 40-year plan right now, your, the, the service area that we want to see is where's your distribution lines at? But you're not held to that. Okay, that last bullet on the, uh, or sorry, the last hyphen on the right side. Is that the right side? Yep. Um, 
The service area is the geographical area which you have agreed and can, and can actually serve. That's your service area. I'm going to get back to that service area thing at the very last slide because there is some questions on the test about that. Okay, But I'll get back to that. But point being right here, we need you to show us your service area in your 40-year plan. And you see where it's at. What's going on? Okay? Uh, did I skip too many there? All right, let's see. Okay, we're still on content of the 40-year plan. We talked about tabulating all the water rights you have um, and showing the works that you've constructed and should be water right specific. Now, I, I want to give you an example of something that happened to me. I had a city who will remain nameless. They called me up and, or sorry, they sent in a 40-year plan to me and it went something like this. They, they defined how their population's gonna grow. They defined how much water they think they're going to need. And then they tabulated up their water rights. Now I'm gonna add some facetious numbers here just to put this into perspective of what happened. But they tabulated up how much water they're gonna need over the next 40 years. And let's say that that added up to 18,000 acre feet of water. Next 40 years, we're going to need 18,000 acre feet of water. Then over here, they show me the tabulation of the water rights that they currently have certificated. And they say, we have 20,000 acre feet of water currently certificated. So they have 2,000 acre feet more water certificated than they're going to need in the next 40 years. And they're asking, <laughs> he's chuckling. You should all be chuckling, okay? And so they're asking us on a specific water right, they're saying, and so we need our water right extended. Give us some more time to submit proof. And here's our 40-year plan to show you why we need more time. Their 40-year plan does not show why they need more time. It shows just the opposite. It shows they don't need the water right. So we had to send that back to them and say, I think you better rethink how much water you need. And they had to recalculate and send it back into us. So the point of that story is you want to be careful with your 40-year plans because you need to show us why you need an extension of time. That's the purpose of it. Okay? So back to that example. If, if you've got 20,000 acre feet of certificated water, you probably ought to show us that you need 22,000 acre feet of water. Now, I don't know how you do that. I don't, know, I don't even want to know all the magic you guys put into things. But you need to show that to us or it's a worthless 40-year plan. Does that make sense? I, I could see people thinking on that one. Okay. Um, let's compare and contrast uh, forfeiture. Everybody really tunes in when we use the word forfeiture. I even noticed that with Mark's presentation. People were like, forfeiture, wait, what's going on here? Um, well, let's talk about forfeiture and your regular Joe Citizen's water right and contrast that with the public water supplier's water right. Okay. Um, if a water right is owned by a non-public water supply entity, your regular Joe citizen, um, he is subject to forfeiture of his water right if his water right isn't used within seven years. We all kind of heard that. I, I heard it in at least one presentation earlier. The, the contrast and the special treatment that public water suppliers receive is in section 73-1-4, they are exempt from forfeiture. Okay? But that last bullet is a big deal there. That last thing down there. It says a change application must be approved after two, May, okay. Well, I'm gonna read that. It says a public water supplier acquires a right after May 2nd, 2008. A change app must be approved to move the water to the public water supply system to protect it from non-use. Okay, now let's talk about that in English. Give an example. Um, developer, you got a little city and a developer comes in and he wants to build some homes on a farmer's property and he says, I've got the farmer's water right. Here you go city, here's the water right. I'm going to put some homes there. The city says, okay, go ahead. That water right is for agricultural purposes. Okay? 
the city is going to want to change that water right to municipal purposes. Okay? Now, unless the city applies for and receives approval for that change application, that water right is still subject to forfeiture. Any questions on that one? Go ahead. You're, you're, you're right so if on he's task. not using it to water the alfalfa, someone else can come in and say, you haven't been using that properly and you're going to forfeit it. Exactly. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so here's, he just, he caught the, the gist of what I'm trying to say. So, if the developer brings in a water right that hasn't been being used, the city's going to then send us a change application on that water right to change it from agriculture to municipal, most likely. Okay, I'm trying to keep things simple here. And if it hasn't been being used, the state engineer has a big problem on his hands. What do we do? How do we approve the application if that farmer stopped irrigating his alfalfa field 30 years ago? It's the lesson learned here is, as representatives of public water suppliers is, you gotta be careful. You can't just take a water right that a farmer's not been be not using for the last 30 years Take it into your portfolio of water rights and think it's protected from forfeiture. It's not until the change application is approved. Any questions on that one? Go ahead. What about rights acquired before 2008? Then you're fine. A little bit scary, but I think you're fine. Does anybody disagree with me over there on that one? I'm not even listening. I can tell you guys anything. <laughs> Free water rights for everyone. <laughs> Still not listening. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So we talked about we talked about that, and I think everybody got that one. So. I think that's good, and I, I, that, that's good information to take back to your public water suppliers, okay? Um, now we're going to talk about proof. What's the difference between submitting proof as a public water supplier and submitting proof as a Joe, Joe public? Joe, sorry, Joe citizen. Let's not confuse you with the word public. Um, it used to be, and I can't quite figure it out, but as you look back in the state engineer's records, you'll see this as well, just like I have. But it used to be that a, a city would walk in the state engineer's door and ask for a five CFS water right. He'd receive approval, sorry, the city would receive approval for the five CFS water right. He'd go out, he'd drill his well, put a pump down in the well that's capable of pumping five CFS, and he'd submit a proof document to our office and he'd receive a, uh, the city would receive a certificate for five CFS. That is not an uncommon thing at all, okay? Those days are over. Can't do that anymore. That doesn't even make sense. I don't know why it was allowed in the first place, but you can't do that anymore. Second side of that, the other column up there, it says, nowadays public water suppliers must show on their proof the capacity of the well, and here's where it kicks everybody right square in the jaw now, okay? an accounting of all of the rights which include the well as one of its PODs. So, I mean, I hope that makes sense. You could have four water, or a city could have four water rights and they all come from one well. The, it's, it's legally authorized point of diversion is one well for all four different water rights. That's a possibility. So, upon submitting proof, you've got to show us all the water rights that come out of that particular well, including the one you're trying to proof up on, and then you've got to compare all of those tabulated water rights with what you've been reporting to the water use program as being diverted from that well. Is that making any sense? Does anybody have questions on that issue? So all I'm trying to point out there is the days of just taking and saying, hey, state engineer, here's my 
here's my proof. I've got a good pump in my well that pumps 5 CFS. Those days are over. You've got to show us, upon proof, you need to show us that you, how much water you're diverting in your city and the capacity of the well and all the other water rights that you're using within that city to show why you can receive a certificate because you've placed this additional amount of water to beneficial use. You have to show it to us in the proof now. Is that, got anybody stirred up? Okay. All right. All right, uh, Paul, can you help me out here with some sound? Let's see if it happens. All right, before I give you an example, I uh, just want to show you what it's like working at the state engineer's office for a day. It's like the girl in the green shirt playing musical chairs at the rodeo. So I want you to take a look at this. Let's see if I could figure out how to... I can't even get a mouse up here. How do you, how do you get mouse control? There you go. All right. <laughs> Paul, I need video and sound. <laughs> oh, okay, here, rewind that. All right. All right, you just can't win for losing around here. So here we go. Some days around here. Somebody, <laughs> please tell me. All right, okay. We're going to go through an example with you here um, on filing proofs. And I've got one slide with it all in text, kind of a story problem. And the next slide will have it in numerical values for all, all of us right brain thinkers, okay? But bear with me. Go, go through this with me. There, is quest there are questions on the test that deal with similar questions to this. Okay? So, here's the scenario. We have a city that has two water rights. It only has two water rights, and they are certificated. They're perfected. Okay? And those water rights, one of the water rights gives the city the ability to divert four CFS. And the other water right gives the city the ability to divert 5 CFS. And that equates to a volume of 6,500 acre feet of water. So that's what the city has currently. Okay? Um, in addition to its paper water that we just talked about in bullet one, in addition to that, the city has two wells. Well A gives or has the capacity, has a pump in it, great, great pumping well, it can pump six CFS out of it, out of that well. And out of, the other, out of well B, that, uh, that other well is a good pumping well as well. <laughs> and it can pump five CFS. It's a good pumping well. They're good, good producing wells. Okay? In addition to that information, the city is submitting water use records to our office. And it is telling us that the maximum it's ever diverted in a, in a one year time period is 2,000 acre feet. Okay? Next, next bullet. The city goes and buys the farmer's water right, and the water right equals 600 acre feet of water and then files a change application to change it to municipal use. The question, the quiz question is this, how much of that 600 acre feet of the farmer's water can the city proof up on and receive a certificate for? She says none. You say none. 
Does anybody disagree with that? No? No one disagrees? Y'all? Okay, what do you got? Okay, you think they can get two CFS? Okay, that's for, he, he said they, he thinks they can get two CFS. Anybody else got any thoughts on that? Okay, the correct answer, and I will show you the numbers, the correct answer is zero. Okay, I'm going to go to the next slide and we're going to talk about it. Okay, so here's the numbers. Water right one had a four CFS limit on it, and it could pump 2,800 acre feet of water. Water right two had a five CFS limit on it, and it could pump up to 3,620 acre feet of water. That totals nine CFS and 6,500 acre feet. Okay, now the city wants to go in and add the farmer's water right for 600 acre feet of water. Oh, what'd they do there? Okay, so the city wants to add the farmer's water right for 600. That then totals to 7,100 acre feet of water. So we look here and we go, okay, the wells that the city has have plenty of capacity. The wells will pump 4,344 acre feet out of that well and 3,620 out of that well, and that totals 7,964 acre feet. So as far as the capacity of the well, hey, it's great. That works good. They, we've got plenty of capacity in the well. No big deal. So that, it passes that test. It's the next one that's the problem. So the city has been reporting to the Division of Water Rights that its maximum amount of water it's ever used in a year is 2,000 acre feet. So you go up to the top there and you look and it's got two perfected water rights, water right one and water right two, which gives the city the ability to pump 6,500 6, acre feet. Extension. An extension of time is a 40 year plan, right? Yeah. Okay, I so appreciate that comment. Okay, that's exactly where I'm headed. So, what we're talking about here though is proofing and receiving a certificate. So guys, this happens to me every day. Well, it's probably an exaggeration. I'd say once a week, I get a phone call from a public water supplier wondering if they should submit proof to get a certificate on their water right. And we go through this scenario that you see right there with them and they quickly learn and understand that they're only pumping 2,000 acre feet of water and they have certificated rights for 6,500 acre feet of water. What, how can we give them a certificate? Remember a certificate means that they placed the water to beneficial use. How can we give them a certificate for more water if they haven't placed the water to beneficial use? That's right. So the lesson you should be walking out of here with is if your water use is not matching up with your certificated water rights, then you should probably submit an extension of time request as opposed to submitting proof. And that extension of time request, if you're beyond 50 years, just like this gentleman just said, would have to have a 40-year plan with it. Does everybody understand that? I get that phone call once a week. Might be exaggerating a little bit, but pretty close. That is a big question for public water suppliers. Do we submit proof or do we submit an extension? That's how you determine it, right there. Make sense? Go ahead. Um, the extensions of time are not set in stone. Times, we don't say, look, you get two years automatically. It's not like that. 
We look at each individual request for an extension of time and some of them will give five years, some of them will give six months, some of them we give ten years, some of them we give seven years. It totally depends on what you lay out in your extension request. There is no set, set number. But great question. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, we don't want you confused. I'm telling you, you walk well, out of here I'm confused, then you're going to call I, me. I'm not a city, <laughs> city water rights guy. So <laughs> the farmer just happens to sell the 600 to the city, uh -huh. and the city says, this is our proof. And the proof is we have these two. We want to buy 600 more. And you say no. What they should have said was, we're going to need more, so we need the 600. And, and I think you're, you've, I you've got the right concept. I'm just going to clear a couple things up, but you've got it pretty much. So here's the scenario. The city's got two certificated water rights. A farmer wants to develop his property, and so as part of the requirement to develop the property, the city says, you've got to give us some water. That always happens, does it not? You've got to give us water. Now the city has the water right, the farmer's agricultural water right in their hand and they file a change application to change it from ag to municipal. And what we're talking about right here is now does the city come in and submit proof on that ag water right change application or does the, does the city submit an extension of oh, time? I see. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. And the answer is in this scenario the city submits an extension of time, not proof. Yeah. Go ahead. If, if the city submits a, an extension of time, but they're unable to demonstrate that they'd have a population growth that might justify that extra water right, then does the farmer retain that water right and have the ability to sell it elsewhere, or, or what happens then? I love your question. Absolutely love that question. I think you asked two separate questions, though, and I'm going to break them apart, okay? So I'm going to answer the last first. Absolutely not. If, if you've made an arrangement for that city, for that farmer to bring water to your city and turn it into the city, sell it, whatever, as part of his development agreement, no, the water doesn't go back to the guy. I mean, you've done a legal transfer of title of that water from the farmer to the city. The city now holds it, that water right, in its portfolio. Okay, so that, that, that's not going to happen. It doesn't go back. But what does happen is the city's going to have to sit there and hold that water, hold that water and an, and an approved change application to, mun to move it from ag use to municipal use until their water use exceeds 6,500 acre feet being reported to our office. They're going to have to hold it and file extensions of time. Now, the one question you just said that was very interesting was, well, geez, what if I can't show in my 40-year plan that we're going to need that extra 600 acre feet of water? Okay, it's a gr perfect question, hoping somebody would ask that. What do you do? What do you do if you can't show in your 40-year plan that you're going to need that additional water? Anybody got any thoughts on that? What's that? Change it? What do you mean change it? Help me with that. Change it for your Change, okay. <laughs> that, he, that, that is an option, is it not? Go get a more creative engineer. That's an option. You're, you're spot on with that statement. But has he already got to create 4,500 more? Yep. Before he's given that? Yep. So you, you can go get a creative engineer? Here's another little secret. Maybe, I don't know, but maybe that city or that public water supplier shouldn't be requiring that developer to turn the water in if they don't need it. <laughs> There's an option, is it? Is that an option? Repeat Let's talk the question. about that. Okay, he says, how about they, the developer has to turn in the water and then the city sells it? Who said that? Can't do it. Why? Very important. 
Very important, a municipality cannot divest itself of a water right. What about leasing? Leasing it, John? Can't do that either. Cannot lease, divest. I actually thought I had a slide with that on, but I don't think I put it in here. Um, you, a city cannot lease or divest itself of a water right. Very important, very good question. Thank you for bringing that up. Ross, Ross this is Kent speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Though the Constitution says they can't lease or divest themselves of that water, they can trade for equal or greater value. I mean, there, there's some, some switching that can be done, but really it's, it's the point where they don't want municipalities to, to lose water rights depending on the administration it's in. They want them to hold that, to keep that for the protection of the citizens in the municipality. Now, there are several municipalities that have surplus water contracts that they, they work. I know Salt Lake City has some, and there are other cities that have where they actually will contract with somebody to use the water who is outside of their, their sometimes even out of their service area, but sometimes they'll run their service area out to them, but they'll get these contracts that as long as they have surplus water in their system, then they, w they can allow these people to use it until it's needed in the city and then they have to pull it back. So, so there is a tool that's being used out there right now. There are, there are things you can do. I would recommend you consult an attorney to decide what your city can and can't do to contract, lease, move water somewhere. There's things you can do to get around some of those things. So hey, Haven't they got to have a 40-year plan just to keep, on, keep a hold of their 4,500? To keep extending. Well, no, in this example, and it's not written there, so I appreciate you pointing this out. But in this example, Water Right 1 and Water Right 2 got, got proofed up and certificated under that old way of thinking of 5 CFS. My pump pumps 5 CFS. We've got a certificate of right for 5 CFS. In this case, it's 4 CFS and 5 CFS. So what I'm trying to say is Water Right 1 and Water Right 2 are certificated water rights. So they don't have to mess with extensions of time and whatnot. Okay, great questions. Okay, hand that to him. Um, I just have a comment. I, I, I think the water use is related to the land use, uh, the water demand. We, we keep track of the amount of water that we use every year. Okay. And uh, for the past four years, we had an, uh, 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 an increase in population of between 500 to 900 people migrating into our city, immigrating into, into, into our city. But now the, the economy is changing. So now the, the, the amount of work that we have, uh, the growth, we are expecting 10,000 people in the, in the next two years. So that population growth on the 40-year plan water demand could be amended every two or three years based on how the economy is fluctuate. Not only could it be, it should be. Thank you for pointing that out. 40-year plans should be dynamic. They change. I mean, just to give you a real simple example, you, you gave a perfect example of, of our city went from growing from 500 to 900. Now it's going to bust up to 2,000. We didn't know that. We need to change our 40-year plan. That's, that's a real good reason to change a 40-year plan. Another silly one would be you they're dynamic, so you're, you're some, in your tabulation of water rights, some of them are becoming certificated as you go along. Some, some stay in the uncertificated column in your tabulation. That stuff is changing constantly. So, so the lesson to be learned, and thank you for bringing this up, is your 40-year plan, not only should it be water right specific, but it should be updated constantly. When things change in your city, you need to update it. You don't just submit us a 40-year plan once and we go, we got it, thanks. Every time you come in for another extension of time on one of your water rights, that 40-year plan needs to be updated and it needs to be water right specific. So thank you. What else? Anybody else got questions on that? They're great questions you're asking. You're spot on. Hold on. Let's get you that because it's going to be a good one, I can tell. So when, when you're growing in, do you 
do you try to prove it up incrementally on that two-year plan, seven-year plan? I mean, do you do it the seven years, or how do you start nibbling into that? It's up to you. Um, it's up to you and your city and your water right professionals. And I do get this question quite a bit, actually. I, as a matter of fact, I got this question last week. They, they had a little bit of space that they could. So in other words, they, they got up in, in this, if, to put it within these numbers, they got to their 6,500 and they had 6,600 water use reporting. So they got another 100 acre feet. Now the question you're asking is, well, do they prove up and, and get the certificate for the 100 acre feet or do they continue to ask for extensions until they get the full 600? It's totally up to you. Um, I, I, I'm probably going out on a limb here. These guys, we might get some speaking from the speakers here. But uh, I, I personally would rather see you wait and, and, and submit this, the proof on the full 600 acre feet. But that is my opinion only. You're, you can go in and segregate off 100 acre feet and then ask for an extension on the other 500 acre feet. That is your option. Did I say anything incorrect there? Okay. Go ahead. So, um, once your right has been proofed, if it was done in the old scenario, even though they're not showing beneficial use of that 6,500, they continue, that right is still safe. They won't lose it for lack of beneficial use, or do they have to show some of it in non-use until they actually can use it? Okay, great question. Um, very good question, spot on. Um, if you've got a water right that was certificated under the old thinking of, hey, you drilled a well, it's got a pump that'll pump five CFS, the state engineer, again, we might get some speaking from the speakers, but the state engineer um, is thinking that that is okay up to that number of acre feet multiplied that CFS times the number of seconds in a year. Did that make sense? Okay, now you had a second part of that question I thought was important, I just forgot it. Is it subject to forfeiture? No, and that was a good question because like I said, that section of the code, I could go back to the slide, I can't remember what I, I wanna say 7352, but anyway, it exempts cities from forfeiture. You do not need to submit a non-use application, or yeah, uh, yeah, non-use application. Good question though. Any others? One from St. George. Uh oh. Are the 40-year plans required to be prepared by a professional engineer? Yes. That's a good question. Any others? Okay. What's that? Say that again. That's how we promote job growth in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to hit one last thing. If you if you got that, I I actually think you guys just got some good information that will help you, and uh, I'm I'm really hoping that you're going to be able to use it in your daily work. So, anyway, I want to. There's some test questions on public water supply service area. I just want to hit this one more time, real quick. Um, it is the geographic area wherein the public water supplier agrees to serve water. And that other side of that, the right side of that is important. I get this question quite frequently too. Um, so you've got your current, your current uh, service area, you got your nice distribution laterals going out and a developer goes down the road a thousand feet, puts a, puts a subdivision in, and you've got to extend your distribution pipe out to that new development a thousand feet, 2,000 feet, a mile. Do you have to submit a change application as a public water supplier? Anybody got thoughts on that? The answer's up there, so it shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? It's probably the more important thing, because I do get a lot of calls on that issue. You do not need to. Yep. You don't need to submit a change application to our office for that. That's helpful. That, that saves us all a lot of time and effort. But it's important you know that. That is, I think that's one of the questions on the exam. Okay? All right. I think that's my presentation, but I want to make sure there's no other questions. I really do want you to walk out of here with knowledge. Go ahead. 
Where is the requirement that the 40-year plan must be prepared by a professional engineer? Is that contained in the statute? I thought it was. Um, I'm going to look over here and see if anybody can find it real quick. I thought it was. A regular Joe Smo can't just submit a 40-year plan, can they? We're always telling everyone that it needs to be done by a professional engineer. I'm just looking to see if it's in code here. Let him look it up, and then you can go talk to him. Um, yeah, I, I would be. Have you? What made you ask that? Have you looked and not seen that? It's not in the statute. It's not in the statute. <laughs> wow. I wonder. Hmm. All right. Let us look it up. Let us look it up here. Um, other questions? Okay, hey, thank you guys. I hope you learned something from this.